Well guys, the time has come. I've officially run out of video ideas. So today I figured we'd just come out here and light a fire in the smoker and sit here. It's gonna be a blast. Let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome in to Fatty's Feast. My name is Josh. Thank you for joining us today. If you are a new viewer, if you're a returning subscriber from the Fatty fam, appreciate this continued support and welcome in. If you find value in today's video, please be sure to like, comment. I wanna hear from you guys because I'm, I'm out of video ideas, like I said. Honestly, I'm really not. And we actually have a reason for just lighting a fire today in our smoker. We actually have two reasons. So the first reason is winter's coming. And I'm about to cover this thing up because I'm not gonna be out here as much. And I figured, why not reseason the smoker? Now I have released a video on the seasoning process for the Old Country Brazos smoker, but it was when we first got it. So that was like a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now. And I figured the thing's dirty. I, it could use a nice solid clean out and we can easily reseason the smoker. And I wanna go through that process with you guys to show you how I do it. The second reason for today's video is I complain so many times about this stupid baffle plate that I cannot stand and how I wanted to take it out. Well, thankfully my good friend Nick came over with his grinder and he was able to grind two of the welds to allow us to pull the plate up and hopefully get rid of the hot spot that's right in the middle of the smoker. Now I left it in, but it's now it's just even. So I can put a water pan over here maybe, and hopefully that the, the hot spot will be over here where it's really supposed to be in a smoker. But we're gonna go through a full temperature test using not only my Thermoworks thermometers, but the biscuits. Yes, the biscuit test. If you haven't heard of the biscuit test, I made a video on that as well. And that's where I found that I have this stupid hot spot right in the middle of the smoker because of this plate. So I'm not gonna go into huge detail about why the biscuit test is so important when it comes to finding out where your hotspots are in your smoker by not just using your thermometers, but using actual food that's cheap and you can ruin. So if you wanna check out that video, I will put a link here, please do. So I think what I wanna do is I wanna start by cleaning the inside of the smoker, give it a nice wash down, and then we will focus on the outside. So to do this, I'm just gonna remove the grill grates here. And you can use gloves to make this an easier process. Let me take out these fire bricks. I once again have six fire bricks in here. Now, if we take a look at the inside of the smoker, it's not too, too bad. I have scraped it out and I normally do when I'm done with any kind of cook, but there is some creosote buildup, especially on the lid, which isn't really good. We don't want that on our food. And we do have, you know, the ash that comes in and all that good stuff. So I have this bucket of warm water with a little bit of Dawn dish soap and I have my disgusting grill brush because we don't want to get it spotless, but we're just going to do a quick clean on the inside just to scrub it down, get some of these loose bits out. I also have a bucket right where my grease drip is so all the water can flow into there. Now I could use a hose for this process. However, I shut my water off for the year, so it's a little bit more difficult. Now if I zoom in here, I got a lot of like bits of creosote and crap coming down. So I'm just going to scrape that off. Try to get all these bits off. Is this a necessary process? Probably not, but I want to get a nice good looking finish on here when we're done. Let's try to get some of this stuff off without getting it in the smoker. It's amazing the kind of build up fire creates. And this should be a little easier down here considering I have the grease trap. Just get some of this in here. And thankfully there's not a lot of rust in this firebox, or excuse me, in the smoking chamber. Also make sure you wear clothes that you don't wanna, or don't mind getting dirty. Let's get some inside here. Do around the smokestack. Like I said, not gonna be perfect. All right, now I can take my scraper and do the same thing on the inside here. The top's not too bad. A little bit of buildup, nothing out of control though. Yeah, a lot of the shit's coming off here is, you know, seasoning that we already had on here, but it's okay. We're gonna redo it. Do you see that? It's deliciousness. And obviously when I started smoking, I had a little bit of trouble maintaining my temps and fire and cleanness, all that good stuff. So a lot of this creosote buildup 
is from when I first started, which you're gonna get build up anyway, but you sort of wanna burn clean fire so you avoid it. All right, now I just wanna pour a little bit of this water in here just to uh, rinse it out a little bit, and I really don't want it going in the firebox, so keeping an eye on that. It's looking good so far. Oh, it looks good, doesn't it? All that delicious flavor. And personally, I like to save this for brisket seasoning. Just kidding, don't do that. Now, I know you can't see it, but the water's pure black, so I'm gonna go rinse that out and change the water for the outside. All right, I just got some towel here. I'm just gonna wipe this down, get on any little gunky parts that are still in here, out of here. I'm gonna close this up. I'll keep the grill grates out for now. Now, one of the biggest parts of seasoning is preventing rust, like I said, in your smoker. And I got some rust forming right here in the cook chamber on the outside. Definitely some on the uh, table here, which I'm gonna have to figure out a way to prevent that. But you also definitely wanna prevent it from forming on the firebox. I got that rust that is on the hinges there. So it'll be a good process just to quickly reseason this again and prevent any rust from forming in the winter. I have a different brush here, a little more clean than the grill brush. I'm just gonna give this a nice quick rub down. <laughs> and just cause there's like pollen and crap on here from when I leave it out during the summer. Once again, it's not gonna be perfect, but give it a little tender love and care. That is bird shit. Now what's really obnoxious is the back of this thing. It is covered in dirt because I have this stupid wall here and rain comes down and just falls right on the smoker. So gonna definitely rinse this off a little bit. My wood is also covered in dirt. It's gonna get a little wet, that's okay. Oh, there's definitely some rust down here too, underneath. So we're gonna have to spray that extra care. And there's some rust forming right here right, like basically where the firebox meets the smoker, which is pretty common. Firebox ain't too dirty, it's just the, pretty much the back. Whew, that was fun. It's worth the time and effort though, you know, to keep your smoker looking good. Um, like I said, you could have used a hose, you could have power washed it, whatever, but um, yeah, I don't have water on right now. So this will have to do, it doesn't need to be perfect. So now the next step in this process is we're gonna light a fire and I'm gonna let it dry out a little bit for maybe like a half an hour or so, and then we'll come back and actually do the reseasoning. Welcome back everyone, it's been about 45 minutes. As you can see, most of the smoker is now dry on the outside. Got a little bit of residual stuff up here, but that's also probably from some grease I spilled the other day. Fire's currently burning pretty clean, always happens when you're not trying to really burn a clean fire, and our temperatures are about 350, or excuse me, 325. What's nice about doing this process is if you look at the fire, I got some really weird splits in there and it doesn't matter because I don't care. So you can always burn like some weird logs you have, like this one, like what is going on with this thing? I wouldn't burn that usually while smoking, but for something like this, it works out very well, puts off some good heat. And of course we don't want to burn a dirty fire per se, but we can screw around with it a bit. This one's a pretty hefty one. And what's neat is today I actually used some kindling to start this because I did not have any charcoal. Let's throw some more bigger splits up here just to get a little drier. If we take a look in the smoke chamber itself, pretty much all dried out. I did wipe down the center again because there was some more gunk and uh, some liquid pooling down here. But other than that, looks pretty good. Looks like we're about ready to start the seasoning process. Now, as I've said in previous videos regarding doing practice burns in your smoker, it's always good to do that so you can learn how your smoker operates. And this is why I love just coming out here and burning a fire. It's a nice chill day. I don't have anything going on. And it just, you know, it, it makes you become a better pit master. And that's what you are, you're a pit master. You need to put that love and energy into barbecue instead of just taking the easy way out with a pellet smoker. I'm just kidding, pellet smokers are fine. But something about the real wood flavor, guys, let me tell you. So basically the seasoning process is like any other seasoning process. If you were gonna do it on a griddle or whatever, we're gonna put oil on the smoker, bind it to it by heating it up, letting it set in, and that way we don't get rust on the smoker. And to do that, the easiest thing to get is one of these. 
This is Pam. It's a canola oil blend. And you don't have to get Pam. You can get whatever kind of spray oil you want. But this is the easiest thing to use in order to get your smoker nice and evenly seasoned. Now, I did get a comment in my original smoker seasoning video, and someone said, why don't you use, you know, something good like grapeseed oil? Well, you could, but why? Because we're not looking for flavor. We're just looking for protection. If, you, if I were going to season my griddle top again, yeah, grapeseed oil is great. It's very easy. But I don't want to sit out here with a towel soaked in oil and rub my smoker down. I and mean, if you want to do that, fine. I, I wouldn't. But this works just as well. And this I got at Costco. I think it's like six bucks or something. Not even. So let's open this up. I actually have a can that's already half gone. So I'm going to start with that. And I put a log on the fire so we can uh, keep the heat going while we work here. All right, so I'm just going to start at one end and work my way around. I'm just literally spraying as much as I can. Nice and even. I'm going to get the top area here. And it's already heated up, so it's going to bind pretty quickly, hopefully. You can see it's not really dripping that much, which is a good sign. Come back down. I'm going to get the top to start. It's a little awkward to get this angle, but it is what it is. And obviously over here is very hot, so we don't want to keep the can right next to the fire. There is some heat coming off there. Try to get the bottom side here. Just do a little bit along the edges before we close it up. And we'll do the outside too, obviously. Now I'm just looking, make sure everything looks even. I think it does. Make sure you get these areas as well where your grates go in a little bit in the chimney now i'm going to throw my grates back in one at a time probably should have washed these two but it is what it is try to get the underside here and then my main my main grate i'll spray the bottom first just because it's a little bit bigger and it's easier to do it this way all right put that back in new can and that was a half can I had. So it lasted us pretty much the entire inside of the smoker. Let's shut her down. Check on the fire. We'll get it turned up a little bit. Perfect. Just want to wipe this down a little bit. There's some wood that got on there. So working man's hands, no, not really. I sit behind a desk. Temperature's going up pretty quickly. We want to get it to about 350, 400, something around there. We're going to burn hot. All right, let's start with the outside. Try to protect the thermometer here. I don't want to get that covered. Notice we have some dripping down. That's going to happen. It's not going to be perfect. I'm just going to spray some on the tray here. It's not really going to do much, but why not? All right, I'm not going to film doing underneath or the backside. You get the picture. We're doing the whole smoker, right? We'll talk about the firebox in a second, though, when I'm done with the rest of that. All right, you guys, outside is done. As you can see, very evenly coated. Looks really good. We do have some drippage, okay? So just be wary of that because if you have it on, you know, a floor or something that you don't want to get dirty, um, A, you probably shouldn't be smoking on a floor but if you're on a patio and you actually don't want it to look disgusting like mine i don't care if it's disgusting but it is going to drip off you're going to have that residual stuff and obviously it's important in this process to have a grease bucket there because you are going to have that dripping from the inside as well so i'm halfway through my other can should be more than enough to complete the firebox now people ask the question do you spray the inside of the firebox i mean you can i don't um because then it just gets disgusting so you're, you have all that ash and stuff going in there, and it's the hottest part of the smoker, so you're not really going to have a lot of moisture buildup. But the important part is keeping the outside protected. Also, cleaning out your ash when you're done. Don't let it sit in there for days on end because ash attracts moisture, and we don't want a buildup of rust at the bottom of your smoker rusting out the insides, and you're not even noticing it until you go and remove that cake of ash. So this is definitely the most important part of the smoker to spray down. And same thing as before. So one thing to keep in mind, too, is that you can do this every cook. You don't have to just do this seasoning it only when, uh, you know, you do your yearly reseasoning or whatever. 
and that is automatically just binding to it right off the bat. Making sure to get everything I possibly can. And just a side note, like I said, um, this is a disgusting process. My hands are covered in grease, my clothes are covered in grease. Don't wear good clothes doing this because you're gonna regret it. Definitely make sure to get under here. Important spot, that's where rust is more likely to form. All right, that looks great. Trying to get a little more on the back side there where my rust was forming. All right, still got a little bit of a bottle left. And those are my hands when I'm done. That's disgusting. I feel like I need to shower. Now I haven't done a smoking accessories video, but uh, if I were to suggest something, a towel may be good to have during this, because now I have to go open my door with my greasy hands and freak myself out. I hate grimy things. So I'm gonna let this go for like two hours. We're just gonna let this oil really bind to the metal. I might actually just use the rest of the spray bottle on here once this sets in a little more. There's no harm in that, especially because I really wanna protect this firebox. But we'll keep our temps probably pushing up to 400, even 450, just to really burn that oil in. And then after that, we'll do our test of the temperatures with the biscuits. So stay tuned for that. All right, everyone, it's been about an hour and 45 minutes. We've had this fire going around 400 to 450, really trying to get this oil to set in. And it looks really good. You can see across the entire smoke chamber and even at the firebox here, we have a nice glossy finish and it's starting to get sticky. A little bit's coming off, but it's, it's almost there. So I thought now would be a good time to do our biscuit, not brisket, biscuit experiment to see where the hot spots now are in the smoker with that baffle plate lifted up. Hopefully we don't run out of daylight. This is gonna be a pain. I, I don't understand daylight savings time. Can we get rid of that? I don't see farmers out farming in the middle of winter around here. And we have um, plenty of farmers. So I have my Thermaworks X4 on the ground here because this is oily. I didn't really think that one through. Usually I connect it to the uh, table here. But we're gonna start with that, see if we can figure out where the hot spots are right away. And I have my four probes that I'm gonna put in. Real quick, let's take a look at the inside. Quick glance, looks good up here. Still sort of setting in, but that's okay. And then let me get a close up of this grate. What I'm noticing right away is that's all dry. So my assumption is the hot spot's gonna be right here. I mean, that's, that's a pretty safe assumption to make, but we're gonna do the test. And I'm more curious because this used to be the hot spot here. So just lifting that up has moved the hot spot. Oh, I can already feel it from right here, which we don't want because that's where our meat usually is. And then it feels like the top of the cook chamber is also hotter, which is a good thing. We want that. So let me evenly space out my clips. I'm gonna do one right at the chimney, one over here at the firebox. And we'll do one here and one about here. All right, first probe in, we'll go here like we always do. Next probe right here. Next probe here. And the last probe, if I can squeeze my fat hand over here, right here. Yeah, you can see where the hot spot is right away. But what I'm noticing besides that hot spot, these are pretty equal. You know, that's the front of the smoker closest to the firebox. That's that little dry section. And then we have the next one and then the smokestack. But those, those look really good. And then looking at our temperature gauge here, we're showing 300 right up top. I'm actually shocked at how good these temperatures are at the moment compared to what they used to be. Because that hot temperature used to be right smack dab here, and that would burn the living crap out of briskets. I'm just watching them. They're, they're going up. That, that hot spot's definitely really, really hot. But I also have the door to the smoker wide open. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I have my fire bricks down here. I didn't put those back in. Let me, let me put those back in and see if those make a difference. All right, that was a project. That was unnecessary. All right, let's see where we're at now. All right, so first glance, um, there is a hotter spot now right here, but this is definitely the hottest. It's at 400, everything else is around 250. I might end up just taking that entire plate out and just putting it up here, but let's do a biscuit test and see what we get. Uh, I love this part. This is the best part about biscuits. Opening these bad boys up, and then, oh, do you see that pop? That was sweet. Let's get them on. Just like we've done in the past, we're gonna throw eight biscuits on throughout the smoker, try to keep them somewhat close to the thermometers so we get a good indication of what's going on. 
Rod Doe freaks me out a little bit. I don't know why. Yeah, so let's get <laughs> weird. Let's get this uh, smoker back up to 350 degrees to get these biscuits rolling. It should only take a few minutes and we'll see where we're at. All right, it's been about 10 to 12 minutes now. I've already looked because I did have to rotate the ones in the hot spot. So let's look at what we're working with. And as expected, these right here are without a doubt the ones that are done first. And it seems like the hotter spot's actually in the back. Everything else though is pretty much at the same level. And I'm, I'm very impressed by that because before when we did this experiment, these right here were all done first and then these on the outside were not. But if this is the hot spot, I have no problem with that because a brisket will go you know, just about to there. And this is where we have the point to sort of deflect that heat a little bit and keep it from burning. And as long as it's coming over and going over the top of the meat, we're not going to burn the bottom of it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And like I said, I've noticed the temperature up here is about 20 degrees hotter than it is down here. So that's a good thing. It's showing me that the heat's actually rising instead of all condensing into this area and then going from here. So let's try one of these biscuits. Biscuits are my favorite thing in the entire world, I think. Mm. These are going to be great. Meal prepping for breakfast this week. Can't have too many of them in one sitting though because of the whole diabetes thing. But I took my insulin, so we're all set. I'm going to take this one off too. And then we got to finish cooking these, so we'll close it back down. So good. You'd think smoked biscuits are weird, but they're not. You know, you can smoke anything that you would cook in your oven in this smoker. You know, as long as you're burning a clean fire. You probably don't want to do a cake or anything like that. That's, that's, that's actually that's an interesting experiment. Maybe we'll try that one day. Mmm. I need to stop. So, that's what I think I'm going to do. I'll let this go for like another half hour. But you guys got the picture. You know, we saw, we cleaned it, we reseasoned it, we threw some biscuits on, figured out that hot spot has moved to over here now. I may very well still take that plate out and just use it down here on the grill grates for uh, the water pan or something, just so I can, if I can get this, this hot spot a little bit farther this way. If I can get it as close to the firebox as possible, I'm going to be much happier, I think, at the end of the day. And I think we'll have more even cooking throughout the entire cook chamber. But temperatures are pretty equal, except for that one spot. It's about 100 degrees warmer. And like I said up here, no, it's actually dropping a bit. It's probably like 10 degrees warmer up at the top now. So that's a good sign. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Fatty's Feast once again. If you did find value in today's video, please like, comment, give us ideas for other videos in the future. I hope if you have a Brazos smoker, um, you can put this to use and realize that this stupid plate is not worth it. Just take it out or whatever. And hopefully we'll be out here cooking something in the winter if it's not deathly cold out. Keep in mind, you should have a cover for this if you're not going to use it. I have it under cover, but I'm going to throw my cover on here because of the snow. I'm not going to do that until tomorrow once the fire's out. Okay. And like I said, I'm going to let this go for another half hour or so just to burn down the wood and let this oil adhere to even more. So other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Most of all, stay tubby. 